$1,000. Gentlemen, it'll buy you this entire wardrobe you see right behind me. Nope, that's a lie. A thousand bucks? You're lucky to build a fraction of this wardrobe. You see, most guys think you need to own a lot of clothing to look good. That is wrong. Now, what you need is a strong core wardrobe. These are the items that build the foundation of the clothing you wear. In today's video, gents, I'm teaching you how to build your core wardrobe for under $1,000. So for today's video, I'm going to niche down. I'm going to assume you're a professional living in Chicago. Maybe you're a consultant. Maybe you're in the marketing field. You are getting started or restarted with your career and it's important that you look good. Now, your casual wardrobe, yeah, I could use an upgrade, but let's focus in on the clothing that's going to help pay the bills. The clothing you need to wear to work. So my initial goal here is to build three outfits. What am I going to start with? Your foundation suit. And right now I'm going to spend $200, 20% of your budget. Now your foundation suits should be dark, should be solid. We're talking navy blue, charcoal gray. You could also go with a medium gray. Black is more for black tie. Try to avoid it too stark of a contrast. Navy blue, charcoal gray, more interchangeable. And what I mean by interchangeable is we want all this clothing to work together. That way you can own the least amount of clothing, get the most number of outfits. Think of it this way. If you've got three suits, three pairs of shoes, three shirts, and they're 100% interchangeable, you have 27 total outfits. Compare that with if they weren't interchangeable pieces, you would only have three outfits. See how it works? Now, what about other fabrics? What about patterns? Well, look at this Glen check right here. What you'll notice about it is it's a muted Glen check. And actually, it's not till you get up close that you start to see there's a pattern. I think this is a great second suit, maybe even third suit, but first suit, it's a little bit iffy. I would rather you go with the solid. That way you could wear the same suit two days in a row and no one's really going to notice. Now, this other check pattern, notice how pronounced the check is. Notice that there's a bit of contrast. This is definitely not a fabric you would want to go with for a first or even second suit. You would want to go with something that is more muted, that isn't going to draw attention to itself. Now, what about the style of the suit? You want to go with something that's classic conservative. Why? Because it'll be in style now. It'll be in style two years from now, 20 years from now, you could actually probably wear the suit. So you're looking at the lapels. You don't want to go with anything really eclectic. So don't go with peak lapels. Don't go with, you know, shawl lapels. You want to go for a classic knot lapel. Look at the back of the jacket. You don't want to go with a no vent. You want to go with a single vent, preferably though a double vent. Pockets. You should have flat pockets down here. You don't want to have patch pockets. Patch pockets, they're fine for a sports jacket, but not a suit jacket. And for goodness sakes, guys, don't forget fit is king. Don't buy a suit unless it can be adjusted to fit you perfectly. And let's not forget the belt, a $50 budget here. And don't forget when it comes to matching your belt, metals should match metals leather should match leather. As long as you're close though, you're fine. And if you know that's a rule and you decide to break it, well, all the more power to you. I want to talk about the sponsor of today's video, Anson Belt and Buckle. So I've talked about Anson Belt and Buckle now for what is it coming on? Seven, eight years to this day. I absolutely love what this company's about. Let's talk about their micro adjust system. So the belts that most of us are used to, they've got the hole system, right? You know what this is. You've got an inch between each hole. You get all the indentions and it gets stretched and yeah, it just doesn't look great. And it's not really comfortable because it doesn't adjust that much. The micro adjust system, guys, we're talking to a quarter of an inch. And this is the way it works. It just goes right in there, a perfect fit every time. And guys, it doesn't matter the size of your waist. You got a 16 inch waist, you got a 52 inch waist. Anson Belt and Buckle has you covered. They send you this really long strap, which then you just basically detach it, cut it and adjust it to however you want to put it. Put this right back on, very simple. All the buckles interchangeable with any of the straps. So when you're looking for a strap to match your shoes, you want a buckle to be able to match your watch or any other metals you've got, Anson can take care of you. And if you want to give Anson away as a gift, maybe to the guy that's got everything, your dad, maybe yourself, guess what? They've got this beautiful gift box. And what I love about this is you can choose two straps or three straps, two buckles or three buckles. Gents, Anson is an American owned family business. I love what they're doing. Support them. Go check them out. Use that link down in the description of today's video. Go grab yourself a single belt. Maybe go grab yourself a set. I think the set is the best deal, but guys, use that link. Go check out Anson Belt and Buckle. Great company. I'm proud to support them. So shoes, let's budget $200. Again, 20% of your total budget. Notice we're spending a lot of money on the suit 
and on the shoes. Why? Because this is the foundation of a sharp dressed man's wardrobe. You don't want to go cheap here because you're going to end up crying because those cheap shoes are going to fall apart quickly. Spend good money. Get yourself a decent pair of shoes. If you can afford to maybe spend three to four hundred dollars and get something that's Blake stitched, get something that's actually Goodyear welted, I would highly recommend. Now, can you find something at the two hundred dollar price point? Yes, but you're going to have to look around. You're going to maybe have to find a deal. So, this shoe right here is the one I recommend every man start with. It's a black Balmoral Oxford and really this is a classic workhorse dress shoe. You can wear this with a suit. You can wear this with a casual suit. You can wear this with odd trousers and a sports jacket. The only thing you wouldn't wear this with are jeans. So, here I'm going with a cap toe and I've got a little bit of broguing in on this. Again, I stuck with a black shoe so it's going to be very not really noticeable and the key here again is interchangeability. Now, what about a color other than black? Yeah, you can look at an ox blood. You can even look at a dark brown. Now, once we start getting into a medium brown and that's what this is, all of a sudden the broguing, notice it becomes a lot more visible. So, I would recommend this not for your first shoe. It's a great looking shoe. It's a classic shoe. This would be a workhorse but make sure that this is maybe your second third, maybe even your fourth shoe if you work and you wear dress shoes often. Now, shoes like this, they're going to grab attention and this is not for your first, second and probably not even third shoe. This is something that you wear maybe once a week, every other week because you're going to get attention, you're going to get compliments but it's not so much interchangeable even though it does have a closed lacing system and it is a classic Oxford. It's just the color right here just grabs too much attention. Now, next up on the core wardrobe, we've got your base foundation shirts and guess what? Bright colored shirts with bright patterns, these are not going to be your base shirts. You want to go with white or light blue. Two whites, one light blue, maybe two light blues, one white. It's all about interchangeability. It's all about simply having clothing that gets the job done and nothing is going to be more interchangeable than a light shirt. But why not go with a dark shirt? Because when you're wearing a dark colored suit, the contrast, this is what creates the more formal look. It gives a crisp, clean appearance. So, how much to spend? About $33 per shirt. Now, you can find something a lot cheaper. Go over to Target, 15 bucks. Or maybe you want to spend a bit more. You've got a larger budget. You can easily spend $100 to $200 on a shirt. The key point here is to know that you can get three amazing shirts for well under $100 if you look around. Jose Banks, Men's Warehouse, uh, tons of menswear stores on the web. Just look around, look for deals. Now, what about the style? Again, simple, classic. Big thing here is the collar. You either want to go with a medium spread or you want to go with a point. A point is going to probably work for most people. Why? A point is made to be worn with a necktie which takes us to the next point. So, when it comes to neckties, they're worn less and less nowadays. However, when you need one, when you need to give that presentation, when you need to look good, you're going into that interview. You need to have this with the right pattern, the right color. It can just make your whole outfit look amazing. And let's talk tie price. $20 is what I'm going to set as the budget. Now, if you go well under $20, what you're going to find here, polyester neckties. I'm not going to say that you need to go with that but it is something that if you're on a budget, you can find decent neckties in the polyester range. Yes, once you go beyond 20 or at the 20 point, you'll often see some 30 or $40 ties marked down and that's what you're looking for. You ideally want to go for silk but I understand at this point, you're really on a tight budget. I would ask around there because there's so many guys out there that have neckties that they're willing to get rid of so you could actually score a great looking necktie for free. With solid neckties, you want to go with deep, rich colors. So, you don't want to go with anything bright. Definitely nothing neon. You want to avoid anything that's going to be like a pastel, anything that's going to be a tint. Instead, look for shades. These are colors that actually have a little bit of black infused into them and therefore, they're just going to feel richer. So, maybe navy. You maybe want to even look at red, purple, even a dark, rich green. Now, beyond the solid tie is my absolute favorite which is the small repeating pattern tie. So, this is going to be something that has multiple colors in it. Again, the base of the tie in my opinion should be a deep, rich, solid color but then you're going to have a few colors patterns on top and this is where it gets fun and interesting because it makes the tie very easy to match. Whenever you're matching a tie with your outfits, what you're looking to do is to find one of these colors right here that works with something. It could be your pocket square. It could be some, you know, a color in the jacket. It could be a color in the shirt but right there, that's going to add a lot and again, if you've just got a navy suit with a white shirt, then in that case, you actually don't have to match it exactly but the dark, rich color is going to look good with that combination. 
Next up, we've got socks, underwear, and undershirts. Each of these, I'm going to give it a budget for $15. What this means is you're going to probably need to go to a big box store. You're going to need to compromise here. You want to go for tidy whities or maybe you're a boxer brief guy, you can pick up a six pack for $15. When it comes to, you know, black socks, just get a pair, you know, six pack right there for $15. When it comes to undershirts, you know, a five pack for $15. So at this point, gentlemen, we are at $614 and guess what? We've got three outfits. So now let's expand past the core wardrobe. Let's bring in a bit of variety. So what's the first thing we're going to add? Well, at $99, again, let's bring in three more shirts. Do they need to be three more dress shirts? Again, it really depends on your particular needs. May this guy right here, he only goes to the office two to three days out of the week. The rest of the time he's able to work and he travels in around Chicago. So in that case, maybe he wants to bring in some casual shirts. He wants to have fun with some patterns. Now notice I didn't say necessarily colors because yes, you can bring in colors, but understand when you bring in colors, it affects the interchangeability. There's so much you can do with white and blue, whether it be stripes, whether it be checks, again, it's sticking with this keeps it very interchangeable. But if you want to introduce some red, if you want to introduce some paisley crazy patterns, go ahead, have fun. Next up, we're going to spend $200 on a sports jacket, odd trouser combination. Now, depending on your professional needs, you may want to go with another suit. That would be a wise purchase. But what I'm looking to go here is something that's going to be a bit more casual than a suit. Something that you could wear on Fridays, maybe on Thursdays when you're out and about and you're not necessarily in the office. So when it comes to sports jackets, this is where you're going to have fun. You're going to bring in patterns and tons of options out there. Now, right here, as you can see, we've got this dark green and we've got this really nice herringbone fabric. This is going to work great because you could also wear it with dark colored jeans, but you could also dress it up with a dark pair of gray slacks. Or let's look at this right here. We've got a blue flannel. This blue flannel, absolutely beautiful. When you touch it, it's going to have a napped surface and that right there enables you to even wear it with blue trousers because they're going to have a different type of, basically the texture is going to look different. So you could actually wear this with blue jeans and it would be perfectly fine, but it's going to look best when you wear it with a, maybe a lighter color chino or maybe a contrasting even red trouser. Now, what about tans? What about browns? I think it's a great option as well, but you got to be careful. So this tan right here is going to be fine, but the light color is going to make it a bit more informal. I wouldn't recommend it necessarily as your first sports jacket, but maybe a second or third. Another option for a first sports jacket though would be great. This is a Donegal tweed. So when you look at the, look closely up at this fabric, do you notice how it's got a little bit of blue in it? It's got the gray, it's got the white. What I love about this is it's really, it grays a non-color, so it's going to match almost anything and yet it's got that little bit of color in here so it's going to look great with a wide variety of your shirts. Now what if you're not in the sports jackets? Tons of casual options out there. You can pick up a nice leather jacket although that may run you definitely the full 200 possibly even well beyond that depending on what company you buy from. Again look for deals out there but another option is to go with a blouse and another classic jacket that you can put on. It looks great. So when it comes to odd trousers tons of options. You can never really go wrong with gray. Gray, again, a non-color. It's going to match pretty much any type of shirt and trouser out there. But right here, as you can see, we've got a lighter gray. It's got a little bit of a napped surface. That flannel right there is going to give it a bit of texture. And pay attention to the style. The style right here is more of a jean style. So this is going to be a bit more casual. Although you wear it with a sports jacket, it'll look perfectly fine. Now, if you're in a more formal workplace, you definitely want to be looking at dress slacks, dress trousers. You're going to know this because they're going to be made from a worsted wool material similar to suits, but you don't have to always go with that. Right here, we've got gray flannel. So gray flannel trousers, a little bit harder to find out there, but if you can find them, I think that they're just a great addition to any man's wardrobe, especially during the fall, spring, and winter. Now, when it comes to khaki, when it comes to chinos, or when it comes to trousers, they're going to be in a brown color. Understand that actually these are very interchangeable. I'm a big fan of them. Why? Because they're going to work with a wide variety of all the different sports jackets I showed you. They're going to work with any of the shirts. Now, chinos like this are great, especially for summer, but they're not very interchangeable, and I wouldn't recommend them this early in your core wardrobe. So, avoid bright colors, something in red. I would instead look to maybe grab a pair of jeans, and that's going to be the next item on this list. And guess what? I'm only going to budget about 30 bucks. Now we'll knock it up to 40. You can find great jeans at this price point. And I think if you look, if you look, there's some great deals out there. Why dark colored jeans? It's going to be more interchangeable. It's going to work with the items we just talked about.
Next up, let's talk about your casual shirts. So you got a couple options out there. I'm gonna give you a $25 budget. You could go with a polo. Easy to find a polo with a $25 mark, especially if you can find a good quality one on sale. Inexpensive polos are gonna run you sometimes $20 to $15. The issue there is that they will start to really fall apart after a few washes. So again, try to find something that's on sale. Now you could also spend that money on a casual shirt. The big difference between this and a dress shirt is that this is not made to actually be worn with a suit or with a necktie. You're gonna see a little style detail Details. Sometimes in the pattern, it's going to be a bit more casual. You're going to notice right here, we've got a pocket that actually has a button on it. So small details like that are going to make this much more casual. And I really like these, especially if you've got, you know, thinner arms, you can just roll up the sleeves. It's a great look and they'll work fine during the winter. And to round things off and not bust the budget, let's maybe add in another necktie or maybe a couple pocket squares for $20. So at this point, gentlemen, the grand total is $998. We have spent almost the entire $1,000. Now, guess what? We've got about 14 different outfits here. Yes, you've got the six shirts, you've got the two suits, but we've also got those jeans in there. Really, you could put together easily 14 outfits from this core wardrobe. All right, Jen, so what video to watch next? How about how to dress for your body type. So I talked about fit, but how do you make sure clothing fits you if you've got a hard to fit body type? You're big, you're small, you're tall, you're thin, whatever it may be, guys, I've got you covered in this video right here, how to dress for your body type.